and welcome everybody. Thanks for taking your time out today. As Paula introduced me, I am Lexi and I'm an occupational therapist and certified hand therapist with Michigan Medicine. I do have a special interest in treating musicians and I'd like to help you work smarter to avoid some of the overuse injuries that can happen when you're on a computer. So ergonomics is the study of ergonomics. I'm not an ergonomics specialist per se, but I use it every day in my work and simply defined, it's just looking to fit the work to workers. So ergonomic principles look at managing all of the risk factors associated. And then with computers, it's mostly sustained and awkward postures, repetitive motions, forceful use, and then contract, contact stresses. So you're already at a high risk due to your profession. Therefore, computer ergonomics is something that you can control a lot more than some of the risk factors associated with your instruments. So musculoskeletal disorders from overuse are common in office workers and musicians. So other terminology you may be familiar with include repetitive strain injuries and cumulative trauma disorders. All of these are best prevented than treated. So that's the goal. So some common complaints related to computer use include headaches, eye strain, and pain anywhere from the neck, wrist, fingers, elbows, your upper, mid, and low back. So sitting for long periods of time along with a sedentary lifestyle is also linked to heart disease, tightness in the hips, weak muscles, poor circulation in the legs. So to manage these risk factors when computing, we recommend neutral positions. This would be defined as the position of the body that places the least stress on the musculoskeletal system while still allowing for maximum control and strength. So creating a good ergonomic working environment and with some behavioral strategies could really protect you. So this uh, little cartoonish is looking at a person sitting at a desk and also standing. And we're talking about ideal positions, no matter whether you have a desk, sitting in your bed, a chair, you wanna keep these things in mind. So if you're seated at a computer, the ideal positioning is to have your head above your shoulders, above your hips. Your hips should be at 90 degrees, your knees should be about 90 degrees, and then your ankles also at 90 degrees. We like the wrists to be straight with the fingers in a slightly cupped position. I can't see myself, so I don't know if you can see. But um, additionally, there should be no pressure on the underside of your wrist. And we recommend keeping your wrist off of the table in this area for mousing and typing. Additionally, it's best if you float over the keys instead of anchoring your wrist on, the, on a laptop or a desktop. <clears throat> and it's always best to use the bigger muscles like your shoulder to move the mouse and to float over the keyboard instead of moving your wrist side to side. This photo depicts a person who has a nice a pretty nice ergonomic chair, which is adjustable. She's modified her laptop. Let's see if I have my pointer. She's modified her laptop up on an elevated platform and she has an external keyboard and mouse. So the laptop is never ergonomic for the body. So to position the monitor, your guidelines are, you should be able to reach out and touch it. That's how far away it should be. It should be just below your eyesight or just be so below. It uh, depends if you have glasses or bifocals, but in general, it she try to strive for it just below eye level. You can use boxes, notebooks, uh, books, anything to put that up. <clears throat> Her back is supported with an additional pillow. Optimal chairs usually come up to about the back of the shoulders, but I mean, this is better than probably a couch. So she's got a pillow and she's got her knees, hips and ankles at 90 degrees. And these, will, these positions will reduce eye strain, they'll reduce back pain and wrist and shoulder pain. If you have a chair that has arms, you should always have it under the meaty part of your forearm. I don't know if this, is this laser pointer working? Oh, there is, uh, under the meaty, portion of your forearm instead of your elbow or under your wrist to prevent nerve impingements. Looks like it was frozen there, sorry guys. Okay, this is showing uh, the same position of the elbows, wrist, hand, and standing, but you want and if you're standing or standing at a counter, you don't want your knees to lock out. You still want your, your ankles at 90 degrees. Your feet should be about hip width, shoulder width apart. 
And it's best not to be barefoot or in slippers when, you know, wear some supportive shoes if you, if you choose to stand. Does this look more like your current situation? I'm sure more so in the past year since you're attending classes online. I didn't steal these photos off the internet. This is my son and his current computer setup. Uh, he's had a few complaints of wrist pain and neck soreness lately. So what if you don't have a fancy chair or a fancy desk? You can, like I said, use some, uh, set your laptop up. This happens to be my setup at home. It's not very beautiful, but it works. I have a bunch of books um, under my laptop and I have a pillow, I have another pillow here and a rolled up towel on my back. So the monitor height again is, you know, just below eye level. And if you actually, if you have two monitors, which a lot of people do, they recommend that you put them both like directly in front of you, slightly angled. If you're using one more the, than the other, put the one that you use the most a little bit before um, your eyes. Stay away from facing a window. If you have a light source, you want it to be over your left shoulder or from the side to prevent eye strain. For the back again, hips at 90, looking at the head, above the shoulders, above the hips. This is being delayed, okay. So back support options, this is my terrible chair, but I did a towel, I put tape around it and this is exercise tubing and I just attached it to my chair. And then um, I think I forgot to mention seat depth, there should be about an inch or two behind your knees when you're seated, if I go back. So behind your knees, behind your knees, there should be about one to two inches here. Sorry about that. Uh, this is another recommendation I use in the clinic a lot. This is called an obus form. I don't know if you can see this, but there's a little round portion here that can be removed and stuck anywhere up or down on your, on your chair. You could use this in a car if you're having back problems. You could use it in a, on your couch. Um, another thing is called a wonder roll. It's self-inflatable. You can use this across the lumbar spine or up and down vertically. I don't I guess you could use it on a regular chair, but it does have a little strap that you can put it on. So hips, knees, and feet, to obtain the best position for your back, your low back, you wanna avoid putting your feet on the, on the chair rungs. And my chair is too high, so I end up doing that. So the best kind of hack for that is just using a note kind of angled like this is perfect so that your ankles are at 90 degrees, knees at 90 degrees. Or you could buy a fancy footrest but it's really not necessary. If your notebook slides around, you can use some of the non-slip shelf liner underneath it. That works pretty well. I was coming here. Yeah, that's enough about that one. Okay, so keyboard and mouse placement. We recommend the optimal placement with your elbows at 90 degrees. Again, I mentioned your wrist should be straight with your fingers um, hovering over the keyboard in a slight cupped position. Um, the best thing to do is to have an under the keyboard tray with a mouse like this one. And if you look, this is a this is on the ergonomic website, which I'll share with you later, just at uh, U of M 10 tips for computer users. This shows all of the recommended positioning. But if you don't have a keyboard tray, you could, you know, have, buy the laptop trays that you can sit on your on your lap. There's a, there's a lot of ways to do that. But um, optimally, you don't want it up on the desk unless your elbows are at 90 degrees and your wrist can be straight. So this is just a good picture showing some of the do's and don'ts of wrist and finger positioning when keyboarding. Most people do the don't, I would say. Um, I have an ergonomic keyboard, so it helps me, but you want to have your, you want to have your, um, Think about your wrist being in alignment with your middle fingers when you're typing and you want to hover over the keyboard instead of turning your wrist towards your pinkies or most people go towards their small fingers but or towards the um, thumb. It just depends on your typing style. So if you look at from the side, you want a straight angle and your fingers slightly cupped and hovering over the keyboard. No resting on your carpal tunnel or bending too much in your in your wrist. Also, there's, I don't know, I'm, I, I tend to pound too much on my keyboard. Use light pressure on the keys. It's not necessary to use a lot of force. Mouse use is another big area of concern. Again, you can have your wrists too far in extension or flexion, but you want that same kind of straight line, if you think about it, when you're holding the mouse. 
And we have caution not to over grip or grab the mouse and use your shoulder to move the mouse instead of your wrist going from side to side. So you can see it's the same sort of problem going you know, right to left instead of using your whole arm. So think about using the biggest muscles possible instead of the tiny finger and wrist muscles. A lot of you probably use track pads. I think um, I would recommend an external mouse if you could, but if you use track pads a lot, try to vary which fingers you use and even try with your left hand. It's really good for the right side of your brain if you're you know, willing to do that. Take breaks. So eye strain is a big contributor to headaches. So you may have heard of the 20-20-20 rule. So for every 20 minutes you're on the computer, take your eye gaze away 20 feet in the distance for 20 seconds. It seems like a long time if you try them. So everybody should try that right now. If you've been looking at a computer for too long. Okay, again, um, varying your posture. You have to find the right break schedule that works for your work style. But every 30 minutes, think about just changing your position, whether you stand up for a little bit. If you're watching this, you can stand up. You're not having to operate any um, controls. Overuse of the same muscles um, is, is not good. You already do that a lot with your instruments and staying in one position for long periods of time. It's just exhausting, especially if you're in an awkward position or awkward posture. At a minimum, you want to get up every hour for at least three to five minutes. You want to move your neck, shoulders, arms, take a brief walk around the room, stretch every two hours, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. And really use your phone to schedule a break and stick to it. If you are having pain, I would recommend taking breaks every 20 minutes or so and getting up for five minutes, completely walking away from the computer. This is another hack you may have seen if you want to make your own stand-up um, desk. So just an ironing board, sometimes on a counter it can work, but you have to try to get the head above the shoulders, above the hips. Um, I'm locking my knees out a little bit here, but ankles at 90 degrees. My elbows are 90 to 120 with my wrist straight. I'm not putting my hand on the book. So that's a, a good way to keep your hands off of your laptop is to literally not have an opportunity to do it. It's not pretty, but it's pretty stable and it works. Okay, it's lagging a little bit again, sorry. Okay, laptop if you must. So I grabbed these photos off online and thought, do they look okay? If you're thinking about, you know, head above your shoulders, above your hips. So mm, not really, her head's a little bit forward. She looks really super comfortable though on this couch. And this looks like a nice desk laptop holder. But I think she could probably get away with this for about 15 minutes max. I wouldn't recommend any longer than that. And then change the position. So this guy, he's more supported in a chair. His his knees, his femurs, you know, legs are supported. Uh, again, both of them are anchoring their wrists on the keyboard, which in this position, you, you there's no way for you to really float. So you'd have to be a lot closer in order to be over the keyboards to float like we recommend. So no more than 15 minutes would I recommend this position. There are ergonomic keyboards. You don't necessarily need them, but uh, I've been using this one in the middle. It's called a Gold Touch Go for about 10 years. I've, they're really great, lightweight. It's just angled a little bit. And the reason these would be recommended is the vertical or um, forearm neutral position, like in the handshake position, takes less strain off your wrist. So if your palm's down all the time, there's a lot of strain on the back part of the wrist and forearms. So putting you in a neutral position is helpful. This one, I've only had one person who had to use this completely 90 degrees. And she was a newspaper um, publisher. And so she, she could do this, but it's possible. And you've probably all seen like this, the Microsoft sort of keyboards. Again, you're not in a, you're not in a forearm handshake position, but it is, it's not fully what we call pronated, so your arms are up a little bit more. There are different mice as well. Okay, it's not moving. Are you guys still there? Yeah, we're here. <laughs> Sorry. It, I'm just okay. like this hanging circle. <laughs> 
<laughs> Does anybody use any of these mice or these these keyboards? Oh, here it comes. Oh, there they are. Here we are. Okay. These are ergonomic mice. These are the two most common that I recommend in the clinic. Uh, the first is completely vertical. You can see the hand. It just puts you in a nice neutral position, although you still can use it incorrectly. So using it correctly would be using the shoulder to move the entire uh, mouse versus side to side, because it would be the same as using a regular mouse side to side, but, but it's, it's just much more comfortable. And the position of the thumb is, is nice. This one is called a hand shoe mouse by Hippus. It literally almost looks like a splint and you rest your hand right in there. And again, kind of moving the, the whole forearm shoulder girdle complex. Okay, we've been sitting long enough. So I recommend getting up and moving. So if you're sitting down, let's stand up. All right, so I would recommend you get up and move. And so we're just gonna stand up and go through some, what I call active motion exercises. So we'll do about five of them. I recommend five to 10. So with your elbows at your side, just 90 degrees, just go palm up and palm down. And we wanna work on your shoulder blades being back as well. So let's not stay in this forward hunched position. Go palm up, palm down, palm up. Palm down, I usually hold it for a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And coincidentally, these are great warm up exercises before you play. Okay, and wrists, let's do wrist exercises. So I'm gonna just start, we'll start with the elbow out. Move your wrist up and down with the light fist. Let's more, hold one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Try it with your fingers straight and feel the difference. You'll feel a lot of stretch here because you're using all those fingers. Up and then make a fist. Up, fist. Again, I would do like 10 of these as a good little stretch break. Now try to move your wrists in a circle with a light fist and Try not to move your forearms. If you have to do it one at a time, that's fine. You can hold your, hold your forearm just to make your wrist in a nice circle. Bigger or smaller, whatever's comfortable. And then thumb to each fingertip, nice O. Next, do thumb up, like hitchhike, thumb up, and then spread it to the base of your pinky. So up, hitchhike, base of your pinky. You might feel a good stretch through here, which is perfect. Another favorite is just twiddling your thumbs. I put them together instead of out to the side because there's not a lot of control at the CMC joint. So put your wrist straight and just do thumb twiddles each direction. Okay, and the bottom one we call tendon glides and this will um, glide your flexor tendons through the carpal tunnel through your wrists. So you start, your fingers are straight. We're gonna pull your fingers down so the back knuckles are straight and the top two joints are, you're trying to touch the pads to your palm. So hook up and then we do what we call a tabletop or I call it like a clam clamshell. Clamshell up and then you go flat fist. So the fingernails are straight, not, not bent. Up and then you do a full fist and up. And try to open your fingers in between. That will help pump any swelling. I don't know if you ever feel swelling of your fingers when you've typed a lot, you're typing a lot, I do. So we'll go hook or up, hook, up, tabletop, up, straight fist, up, full fist. Let's do one more. Straighten, hook, straighten, tabletop, straighten, Flat fist, straighten, full fist. Okay. 
Okay, the next one, if you think about how your posture is a lot, even on your instrument and on the computer, everything we do is pretty much forward, head forward. So I recommend spending some time going opposite. So the first one here is basically just lifting your shoulders up and doing circles backwards. I would recommend doing those like every hour. It feels pretty good. So up, backwards, do 10 of them. This picture actually says to go forward. I would ignore that. I haven't figured out how to erase that. So never go forward because you're already forward enough, up and back. The next one on the top right is for your shoulder blades. Think about the bottom of your shoulder blades going towards your opposite back pockets when you do this. And this is a good one to do a lot, even if you're sitting and just sitting at the computer to train your shoulder blades. Again, it's for posture. It will unload any um, problems you might have distally if you have any issues. So you bring those shoulder blades back. It's not really moving the shoulders, it's the shoulder blades. So we just got that. If these are your shoulder blades, think about them coming down and towards opposite back pockets. So stand up and then hold. This one is really hard to do properly. Don't worry if you can't. If you have any questions, you can, you can get a hold of me. So you can work on that one. And then another very important one is called a chin tuck. You see this photo, it looks like if, if you do it correctly, think about if someone was pulling your hair from the crown of your head towards the ceiling, Okay, and then your chin goes backwards. So to do it properly, it's up and back, and you'll feel like you've got a double chin, where well, you will have a double chin. You'll feel like you're choking a little bit. You'll feel a little bit of stretch on the back of your neck. So you do chin cup and hold. Suppose that you can't do too many of those. So this is great for your posture to avoid text neck. Okay, the so chin tuck. And the last two, I um, skip the bottom right. The last two is just turning your head and looking over your shoulder. Hold that for five seconds. Same, the opposite. Just kind of go back and forth and make sure you're not like taking your head back or bring it down. Sometimes doing it in front of the mirror is helpful. And it's normal to have one side. I can't really turn towards my left, but it's normal to have one side be a little tighter than the other. Maybe pay a little bit more attention to that side and make sure you're not lifting your shoulder. That's normal, it's normal when you have tightness in the neck. And then the last one for the neck is ear towards your shoulder. Let gravity assist you with this, ear towards your shoulder. So try not to go forward or back. It's ear towards your shoulder, so you're getting a long, a long stretch on the side. If you have numbness and tingling, I would not do these. Or if you have pain, just go up to it and say hello and back off. And a good hold for five seconds is perfect. Okay. So I mentioned stretch. Stretch is best done. Motion is six seconds or less. Stretch is best done after a long typing session, after long um, rehearsals or uh, playing your instrument. And I think, um, these are kind of hard to do just quickly. And I would recommend starting at about a 10 to 15 second hold and then working up to about 30 seconds, five reps, up to 10 reps. So the most important ones would be number three here. <clears throat> just pulling your arm up and trying to pat your back. Stretching it. Not really an easy one to do. I need to work on this one myself. This one's showing her arm over a little bit more. It's too tight. So the more you can have your arm here and up, the lengthen through your lat. Let's try it on the opposite side. You don't want your arm off to the side. You want it up and pull it back. Catch yourself on the back. You're doing a great job. So I'm just gonna go through these. And then the next one that is great is bringing your arm across your shoulder, across the front of you, using your arm to stretch. If you do these for 30 seconds, it feels like forever. Again, this would be at the end of the day or after a long typing session, it would be optimal. 
So recommend number three, number four. Number six is a good one just to, kind of looks weird, but just to pull your arms all the way back to open up your pectoral muscles. Stretch the front sides of your arms. Number seven is best if you do that on a wall. Um, you're holding your elbows. You're holding your elbows and you're doing a side twist. So you really, if you're on, if you're on the wall, you'll feel it more. And you can do it properly. And again, it's normal to feel one side is more tight than the other. Okay, I'm not stretching as long as I recommend it, but this is for brevity. Okay, and number eight and nine are the same. It's just one is active and one is passive. So if you have no issues, you can have your hands in front of, your in front of a desk and just stretch. Your elbows are like this. So the desk here. And do not it's just a stretch on the top side. Opposite position. Auto care stretch. This one is one of the best for strengthening and stretching. It's called the W on the wall. This is my son. He could not even get his arms back. So it's a really good one to uh, work on your shoulder blades in terms of strength and then open up the pecs. So you would stand with your, with your arms, everything touching the wall. You start in your arms with a W. This can also be done lying down too. It's actually easier if you do it lying down, not against gravity. And then you're sliding up into a Y. So the key for this one is to make sure when you're doing it that your shoulder blades and your butt, everything stays against the wall and you're really controlling the position of the shoulders and your neck. So it's great for your pecs. It's great for the anterior pec here. And your hand should eventually, your forearm and your hand should all touch the wall here if you're doing it properly. Don't worry if it isn't, it's a goal. Uh, if you can't do it standing, I would do it, I would do it lying on the floor. Think of it as a snow angel. And then I've just listed some resources here. Um, the M Healthy website has a lot of tips. There's checklists that you could follow, you know, in, looking at your desk, the positions, there's some videos that you could look to see if you're keyboarding properly, you have the, the proper position. Um, this shows how to adjust chairs. So there's a lot, and this has a lot of just the positioning if you're if you're more interested in the exact measurements. But really, just work smarter, not harder. Try to get your head above your hips, above your, your head, above your shoulders, above your hips, elbows at 90, hips at 90, knees at 90, ankles at 90, and you'll be already in a better position. Thank you for your attention. And I am happy to answer any questions if you have any. Um, if there's a lot more to this than I've covered, but I'm, I'm happy to answer any emails or any questions if you have them.